Stored in this directory and in some subdirectories is the source code of a complete web service and the client program that talks to the service. It's a simple service. It only has one method. When the client calls the method, it passes an int value to it, and the method returns a string which contains the words which are the names of the digits in that number. For example, if you pass the number 39 to the method, it'll return a string 39. The code of the service software is stored in a subdirectory named Web Services. There are two files in here. One is the interface and one is the web service itself. Now the interface is implemented by the service class and it's also used to construct the skeleton and the stub. Here's the interface. Its package name is the name of the directory holding it. The interface implements the remote interface this service only has one method and that method is defined as throwing a remote exception in this example the server method accepts an int value and returns a string now remember this is more of a general service than beans are so the types of things that can be passed and returned are a bit more limited any of the primitive types of int float and so on can be passed and returned also, the wrapper classes of the fundamental types, integer, character, and so on, can be used. The stub will handle the translations for you. In addition, certain other classes can be passed back and forth. They are string, big integer, big decimal, date, and calendar. You can see how the stub could translate these classes in and out of standard formats. Also, you can use some of the collection classes, such as hash map and array list. Here is the actual implementation of the service itself. It's in the same package and it implements the interface I just showed you. In fact, that's all it does, implement the methods of that interface. This method builds a string of words inside a loop. The number is divided by 10, and the digit left each time becomes a word added to the string that's returned eventually to the method. This is the entire service. Now, if your service is more complicated, you could have the methods of other classes being called here, which could include reading the database or even calls to beans or other services. And that's all the source of the actual service. The interface defining the method or methods that can be called and the service implementation itself. The only other Java code for this example is the client program. The package name is, again, the name of the directory. Notice the two import statements. The first one is an import of the interface that was just defined, but the second one is an import statement for an entirely new Java class. Notice the underscore in the name, making it a different name. This is a class file that's going to be automatically generated in a later step. In fact, we're going to be automatically generating a number of class files, but I'm getting ahead of myself. All of the code in the main method is inside a try block because there are some different exceptions that can be thrown by the different method calls. The first thing that the client needs to do is get a reference to the stub for the service. Here is a call to a method of a new instance of the automatically generated class to return the appropriate stub. The stub itself implements the previously defined interface, so this line casts the stub to that type and stores it in a reference named inWord. And that's it. Now this program can call the method and have its messages go round trip. This loop evaluates each of the arguments, passes each value to the service, and then prints the value followed by the string returned from the service.
The arguments are all expected to be integers, and each one will be printed as a number and as its string of words. Now, that's all the Java source code. At this point, the service definition is complete and can be compiled. The client cannot be compiled yet because it imports a class that will be created in a later step. I've made a very simple script for compiling the services. All it does is set the class path and then invoke the compiler. The class path is set to the current directory and to a couple of jar files. The first jar file is a standard J2EE jar file, and the second is the JAX RPC jar file. The compiler command uses the D option to cause the class files to be stored in the same directory as their source files. So the service can be compiled with this one command. In the next lesson, the WSDL file will be created.